Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2023. So we've been talking across multiple videos about how we can use game objects, the things we add in our game, cameras, characters, various other things, and communicate with various systems. And we do that via components. We add components to game objects and they allow us to talk to the different systems within Unity. The rendering system, what draws things to the screen, audio system, and various other systems. As part of that, we've been talking about ways that we can kind of interact between the scripting components, that's what we add code to a game object, and Unity itself. We've been able to set up fields, values within code, c -sharp code in particular, and then use Unity to add to those values. So we saw in a previous video how we created a user interface game object, a text mesh pro game object called text, this up here, we were then able to use its value as part of a field in a C sharp file. So our square file right here, right here, score is set up as text and in in parentheses TMP, text mesh pro, and we were able to take this game object and drag it over here in the inspector view and use it with this. So we are finally able to start to put things together. We're now able to create a kind of simple collection mechanic. We've got a score updating as we collide with that collection mechanic, our coins within our space. Let's finally start to talk about scenes. So when we work in Unity, we divide up a game into a bunch of different scenes. These are our subsections of a game. Right now, we're just dealing with one scene, the sample scene but we sometimes want other scenes. So let's talk through in this video how we create a scene and then potentially how we move between scenes if that's what we wanna do. So let's start though by talking a little bit about what we have by default. So this entire time, all the video, previous videos up to this video, we've been using one scene. And that's because whenever we work within Unity, we work within a scene. There is always an open scene. And in fact, the open scene will always be open as part of the hierarchy view. So we've talked about the game objects within the hierarchy view, but there's also this thing up here called sample scene. And in fact, it's got a little arrow right up here. And if I click it, it then closes up that right here. And I re-click it, it lists them all for me. What that shows is the currently open scene called sample scene. In fact, there's also a folder down here in project view called scenes, if we double click, we notice sample scene. We have access to a scene. So let's go ahead and create another scene and then we'll talk about how we can manage them within Unity. So anytime we create stuff with Unity, there's multiple ways to approach it. We saw the same with game objects, right? When we're working with the hierarchy view, we have the ability to click this or click up here, game object, or right click and do the same thing. Pretty similarly, down here in the project view, if we want to create a new scene, there are multiple ways to go about it. I can either use this plus right here, or I can right click and do the same thing. But at least for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and click plus right here, and then I'm gonna look for scene right here and click. And I'm gonna call this menu. So now we have two scenes as part of this game, menu and sample scene. So I'm gonna double click menu, and we're gonna notice that it's now loaded over here in the hierarchy view. It has menu instead of sample scene, and it has, oh, our main camera. Pretty commonly when we create scenes, it will automatically add a camera, assuming that we wanna actually look at something, the video part of video game. So we already have a camera, which means we have the ability to look into the scene. And in fact, if we click play, we can look into this current scene. And there's nothing there to look at, but exists. We can currently look into it. So we know from a previous video that we can use user interface game objects. We saw text as part of text mesh pro. And when we added that, it also added a canvas game object in which the text was a child of the canvas parent. But that allowed us to put user interface elements on the screen. And we just used one in the previous couple of videos working with text. So let's add to that knowledge by working with text and working with a button. Our goal here is to create a scene called menu, which will serve as the main menu of the game, in which we will start playing from this menu and then move into sample scene. So to do that, we need to add user interface game objects. So let's go ahead and add text, knowing it will 
already, or automatically that is, add a canvas game object as well. So we're going to go ahead and create a new game object. Again, there's always multiple ways to go about things in Unity, but I generally like to go do things within each individual view. So we're going to go down to UI, over here to text, and then text mesh pro. And notice it added text and automatically added canvas. Now, the thing we learned in a previous video that whenever the canvas game object is added to a scene, it assumes we want screen space overlay. That is that the user interface game objects exist within the world and are not necessarily connected to any central camera. And there are certainly use cases where we want that. But at least in this case, we want everything to be within the camera. We're not going to move through the world and eventually find that user interface element. We want everything kind of within the camera itself. So we're going to click on Canvas. And then again, as we went through in a previous video, set this screen space to camera. And then over here, I'm going to click, go over to Scene, and select Main Camera for the scene. And then notice text is now in this corner. And our Canvas is locked to our camera, which is good because generally we don't move around too much in main menus. So I'm going to go ahead and click on text, which is going to highlight down here, and I'm going to drag it kind of roughly in the middle-ish, and I'll make it a little bigger right here, the, the box that contains it. And I'm going to come over here in new text and just simply rename this main menu. And now we have a kind of simple main menu. Now we have lots of styling options right here, but I'm going to come down to alignment, come over to just center, and it just says main menu in the center. Of course, I have the ability to make the font size much bigger and lots of other options for me. I'm just going to let it leave it there for right now. So let's go ahead and play this so we see what this looks like from the scene's perspective. It has main menu. Fantastic. Right there at the top. So let's add now a button user interface game object. Then we're going to need to write some code that's going to work with that button such that we can now move from our main menu into our quote unquote game, which is part of sample scene. So to do that, let's kind of rewind. First thing we're going to need, need to do is add a button and then we'll kind of work, worry about the code part. So I talked in the previous video how some game objects can exist in a parent-child relationship. And in fact, we've seen multiple examples of this using the same game object. Text will automatically have a parent of canvas, which is the thing it's drawn within. So let's go ahead and click on Canvas, and this time over here, plus drop down, come down to UI, and then I'm going to come down to Button, Text Mesh Pro. And let's add Button. Notice Button is now a child of Canvas. So we'll put the button right here, and then similarly, I will click and drag it. Let's kind of put it roughly in the center. Maybe we'll make it a little bigger. Why not? Kind of put it roughly in the center. Okay. Now, a button is composed itself of other game objects. Similar to when we added a text and it added canvas, when we add a button, it adds something else. And in fact, notice its dropdown, it adds text, because it has text inside the button. So I'm gonna call this, write this as start. So we have a text game object inside of a button game object, which is inside of a canvas game object, and this is perfectly fine. This is in fact the hierarchy of game objects which is why it's called Hierarchy View, because it's showing us the connection, the relationship between these different game objects, although we've not really done that too much until this video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Button right here, and we're going to notice it's got lots of things. It's a canvas render, it's got an image, and it's got a button, and then down here it says On Click List is Empty. So this tells us what happens when we click on it, which right now isn't doing anything, and that's fine. That's what we expect to do by default. But what we want to do is when we click on the button, we want to load sample scene. To do that, we're going to need to write some code. Before we write some code, let's talk a little bit about how we can think about scripting components within Unity. Pretty commonly, we add scripting components code to the game object in which they interact. So when we saw in a previous example, we were working with the square, the red square. We added a scripting component and we wrote its code to deal with that game object. And that's a very good pattern to get into. There might be some cases, however, for something like main menu, where everything within the scene is all kind of the same thing. That is, everything having to do with main menu is in the menu scene and there's not going to be anything else going on. So what we could do 
is create a game object, add a scripting component, and that scripting component contains all of the code for the entire scene. So instead of associating with a particular game object, it's associated with the whole scene itself. Let me show you an example of that. So we have over here in the menu scene a listing of corresponding game objects. I'm going to add something a little bit different. So instead of going in here and going through all of the possible game objects with its already existing components, which of course are to particular systems, I'm going to create empty. And I'm going to call this main menu code. And this is an empty game object. So in Unity, there are existing game objects that have existing components that we can automatically start using. But we also know that game objects are simply, or simply use components to talk to particular systems. So the game objects that exist within Unity, sprites and others that we've now used, just use particular components. We can also create an empty game object that doesn't have any components, which is what I've just done. This can be really helpful if we want to set up particular things that we then want to kind of customize in our own way. So I've started with an empty game object and I'm going to add a scripting component and then that scripting component is going to control, it's going to have its code, kind of the whole main menu, which is not going to be a whole lot of code, but it's kind of simplify it for just this particular scene. So over here, let's add that component. So I'm going to add component, scroll down to the bottom, new script, so a new scripting component. And then we need to give it a name. So sometimes we can click in here, but if it's a little sticky for you, you can also press tab until it's selected right here. And so I'm going to rename this main menu. Now we could name this whatever we want, and previously we named something else square for working with square. I'm going to name this main menu such that it matches main menu. You could potentially name it something else, so I'm going to click create and add. Now, despite the fact that we are currently looking at the scenes folder in the project view, it added code back in the assets view, or the assets folder. So notice we're looking at asset scene, which is where menu is, but if I click on assets, now we see main menu over here. So we can, so our code is organized here and our scenes are in a different folder. And notice now we're starting to actually move among organization within the project view itself. We have multiple things as part of our project and we are moving between them. So I want to write some code right here. So I'm going to double click main menu. And it's going to open it up over here in Visual Studio for me. And notice Square, it was previously open, and it's still open as another tab, although we're not going to mess with it as part of this video. So by default, we're given two different methods, which we know tie into existing systems within Unity. The start method is part of initialization, and the update method will be run before the drawing happens. So we can update stuff, and then it will be drawn by Unity. I'm actually not going to use either of these. So I'm going to select all of this, simply hit delete or backspace to take it all out. So what I want is I'm going to write a single method and all it's going to do is load a scene. That's all I needed to do. So I'm going to type void, start game, parentheses, open and closing curly braces. So what do I have? I just have a single method right here. But there's a little bit of a trick to this. Remember when we talked about fields as part of C-sharp classes? That is, we have private fields, public fields, and serialized fields. By default, everything is private within C-sharp. And this is really good security and also good design patterns to get into. We want things generally to be with the same file, with the same class. But if we want other code to access this, and similar to what we might make a field public, we need to make methods public if we want other code to be able to access it. So in front of void, I'm going to write public right here. So public void start game. Void means we're not going to return any data. So this is going to run something, but it's not going to process or return any data. And otherwise, we would have put the data type as part of it. It's void, meaning we're not returning anything. So what I want to do is I want to load sample scene. That's the other scene. So we're starting with the main menu and then we're loading sample scene. To do that, we need to use an existing 
object that is available to us as part of the Unity Engine software library. We talked in a previous video how the using Unity Engine up here at line three means we're tapped into its software library and all the code it's providing to us so we don't have to write our own to solve kind of common things. One of the common things it's solving for us is something called scene management. So we have sample scene or we have menu scene. Sometimes we want to manage those. We want to load one or create one or, or do kind of all number of things. As part of that, we have something called scene manager. So we want to manage scenes. So notice as soon as I added this up here, it added scene management up here. So I'm now using part of this software library that it's providing to us. So scene manager, and then what I want to do is I want to load scene. This is what I want right here. And then I need to provide it right here, um, either a name or a number. And I'm going to provide it a name sample scene, which is the name of the other scene, and end it right there. That's all this method does. It's public, meaning that other things can access it, and importantly, Unity can access it. And all it's going to do is load another scene by name called sample scene, which is the other scene we have. And I'm going to go ahead and file, save this file. So all of this main menu is going to do, at least right now, is going to have this single method called start game, which we're about to associate with the button. So when we click on the button, it loads the next scene. What is it loading? It's loading sample scene, which is going to send us into the game itself. So let's go set all that up. So I'm going to move back over to Unity. It's going to reload everything for us real quick. There it goes. Everything is loaded. Fantastic. So I'm come back over here to button. And pretty commonly of what we've seen, I'm going to mess with the inspector view to set things up. So down here on on click, it says list is empty. And I'm going to click plus. Now, it's going to give us some options. It's going to say over here in the drop down, do we want things off? Do we want editor and runtime or do we want runtime only? There are some rare cases where you do want editor and runtime, but nearly always you just want runtime. Now, the reason why it's giving us this options is because if we want to, we can set things up and then when it, that we are not playing, we can still use various buttons and do various things. But we generally don't want to do that. So it will default to runtime only. Now, it says, hey, right here, I need an object because it needs to know where do I find this code? Well, we know where our code is. Our code is part of a scripting component that's part of the game object called main menu code. So what object are we using? What game object are we using? Well, I'm going to click and drag main menu code and drop it right here. Boom. So main menu code is now the game object we're doing, we're using. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. It says, what function do I want to run from main menu code when this button is clicked? We're going to have lots of things to choose from, but we know we just wrote a method called start game. So if I click on here, it's going to say, oh, do you want game object? Do you want transform or do you want main menu? Now, it's a little bit confusing here, but remember, main menu is the name of the C-sharp file. So that's actually what we want. So let's come down to here. And it says, oh, here are all of the possible things you could possibly use. Now, remember, this list seems a little bit confusing. What are all these things coming from? These are coming from the file provided to us. So we wrote main menu, but main menu is based on another file that has a bunch of other things going on that we sometimes tap into but generally don't. What we're interested, though, is start game. That's the method we wrote or the function we wrote. So I'm going to come down here and click on start game, and then we're done. So when we click on this, it will grab this code, and it will run main menu dot start game, which is exactly what we want. Main menu, start game. That's exactly what we want it to run, which will then, from the scene manager, load the scene. So let's go ahead and play this. So now we have a main menu. It's not terribly exciting right now, but it exists. And we have a start button right here. And if we click this, now we're loaded into sample scene. Now notice when I clicked it, we immediately jumped to the next scene, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. The other thing that happened is while we're running, we've now shifted scenes. And now we're in sample scene up here, and we see its game objects listed right here. So if we stop, though, we're going to go back to menu, which is where we started from. So now we've added right here an extra scene. And from that scene, we've now added text 
and we downed a button and we've written some code using scene manager within Unity to load another scene. So let me review everything I've talked about in this video. We divide up a game in Unity in different scenes. Those are the kind of sections of a game. We have, by default, a scene called Sample Scene. And we've, in previous number of videos now, been working with just the sample scene and not really caring about it a whole lot. We've been more worried about how game objects work with systems. But now we're starting to think about a larger game, and so we want to add some extra sections. One of the things we added in this video is a scene called Menu. Menu scene, when we created, had a main camera. And based on that default, we then added multiple other user interface game objects. We first added text, which added a canvas, then we added a button inside of that canvas. And then we saw the hierarchy, the relationship between those game objects. A button has a text object right here. It's inside a button, it's inside of a canvas, and we could potentially do many layers deep if we want to do that. As part of this, though, we've been able to move around one text thing right here, main menu, and have a button right here. As part of the inspector view in the button, we have something called on click, which happens when we click the button. In order to do something about this, we needed to write some code. As part of our organizing of code, sometimes we put the code that is associated with the game object on that game object, and sometimes we don't. Generally, we should do it, but in this case, we didn't because our code is relatively simple and has everything to do with the scene rather than a particular game object. So we created an empty game object right here, main menu code, created a single scripting component, which led us over to creating the main menu C sharp file. For this file, we have a single method called start game. It is void, which means it doesn't process or return any data, and it's public, which means Unity can see it. We are using a scene manager and its method called load scene, which we're loading by name right here, sample scene, which is the other scene we have within our game currently. So when we now play this and we click this button, we will go back or we will go to sample scene. And so now we have a main menu or at least the start of one. We have the ability to click a button and load another scene. And now we're working with multiple scenes. And as we'll see now in some future videos, this will help us start to separate some things. We'll have sections of the game where we play and sections of the game where we have menus, which will be separate scenes within the game and our ability to kind of move between them depending on what we're doing. We'll also now start to isolate code and better organize it. Our game mechanics will be over here, our menu code will be over here, but they'll all be based on the same ideas we've been using across a large number of videos now. We're using Unity, it's a game engine, it has lots of systems, rendering, audio, and a bunch of others. We're creating game objects and we're using components to connect game objects to particular systems and also using c -sharp code as a scripting component, again, talking to a particular system, to then manage some stuff. So we're writing code, we're working with Unity, we're developing lots of different game objects, and now, as part of this video and going forward, also now working across multiple scenes to better organize those game objects as part of a more complex example we'll slowly be building into the future. Thanks for watching.